In ancient India, there were two kinds of rules in practice, monarchical and republic. A republic system did not have an absolute ruler such as a king. It was governed by a group of people. In monarchical system, every member of a clan accepted the superiority of the leader or king. In this chapter, we will study the following topics. Sources Our main source of information about this period are the Vedic texts like the Brahmanas, Upanishads and Buddhist texts like Jataka. They mention about the Janapadas and Mahajanpadas which existed during this period. Archaeological material found at Achichatra, Hastinapur, Koshambi, Ujjain, Vaishali further collaborates the information provided in the literary texts. A monarchical system was one in which there was a ruler, a monarch, who was the king, no matter what his actual title was. In the early period, the post of king was not hereditary, but gradually it became hereditary. Republic A republic system, on the other hand, did not have an absolute ruler, such as a king. It was governed by a group of people. Janapads Different clans of Aryans settled in different territories in Ganga Yumna Valley, which came to be known as Janapads. When several Janas settled in a particular area and their population increased, the entire area was known as Janapad. The clans sat together to solve common problems like defense, irrigation, etc. These came to be known as Ganas and their system of government was known as Ganasangha. Thus, they made laws and evolved a system of republican governance. The Shakyas and Lishavis were two important republics. In course of time, some Janapadas conquered the neighboring territories and were transformed into powerful kingdoms and republics and were called Mahajanapadas. A little before Buddha, Northern India came to be divided into 16 such Mahajanapadas. Sixteen Janapadas These sixteen states were always trying to capture each other's territory. Four powerful states emerged out of this rivalry. Vatsa, Avanti, Kosala and Magadha. Magadha Magadha came into prominence under the leadership of Bimbisara. His capital was Rajgira, modern Rajgir. He became the king of Magadha in about 545 BC. One was the princess of Kosala. She brought with the territory of Kashi as dowry, which yielded large revenue. His second wife, Chalana, was a Lichanchavi princess. And his third wife was the daughter of the chief of the Madra clan of Punjab. These marriage alliances increased the prestige of Magadha and helped it to expand westwards and northwards. Marriage alliances. First, he strengthened his position by marriage alliances. He took three wives from the neighboring ruling families. One was the princess of Kosala. She brought with the territory of Kashi as dowry, which yielded large revenue. His second wife, Chalana, was a Lichanchavi princess. And his third wife was the daughter of the chief of the Madra clan of Punjab. These marriage alliances increased the prestige of Magadha and helped it to expand westwards and northwards. Capital City There were many other factors responsible for the rise of Magadha. There were rich deposits of iron ore close to Giri, Vraja, Rajgira, the capital city of Magadha. This was a valuable metal used for making both weapons and implements. These implements were extensively used for clearing and plowing the land. Iron weapons were not easily available to the rivals of Magadhan princes. This was a major advantage. Factors responsible for the growth of Magad By the 6th century BC, 
North India was divided into 16 Mahajanpads or kingdoms out of which Avanti, Vats, Kausal and Magadh rose into prominence. Magadh under the leadership of Bimbisar of Haryanka dynasty rose to political distinction. His policy to form marriage alliances with neighboring kingdoms Kausal, Vaishali and the Madra helped him rise over the other Mahajanpads. The earliest capital of Magadh Rajgir was surrounded by five hills that made Rajgir impregnable. Gradually, with successive dynasties, Magadh took advantage of its geopolitical strategies, followed by its successive dynasties who ruled the kingdom. These are some major dynasties and reasons helped Magadh in its rise. Later Haryanka's kings, Bimbisar, 542-493 BC, his son Ajat Chatru, 492 to 460 BC, his successor Udain, 460 to 444 BC, upcoming Shishunag's dynasty, followed by mighty the Nanda dynasty, especially Mahapadmananda. He proclaimed himself the Ekarat, the sole sovereign of the region. Causes for the rise of Magadh Advantages geographical location of Rajgir and Patliputra Abundance of natural resources, such as iron, equipped Magadh with effective weapons. The alluvial soil of the Gangetic Plains and sufficient rainfall enriched Magadh agriculture producers. Rise of town in Magadh, use of metallic money boosted trade and commerce. Use of elephants in wars with its proximity to ancient Kalinga. Unorthodox character of Magadhan society Contribution of several enterprising and ambitious rulers Ambitious rulers and their policies Trade, ships could bring precious stones and spices from South India to Magadha. Trade from South India was carried on through the Bay of Bengal. The ships entered the port of Tamralipti at the mouth of the Ganga where Kolkata is now located. Sailing up the mighty Kanga, these ships unloaded their costly cargo at Champa. This made Magadha very rich. The province of Magadha also benefited from the rise of towns and the use of coins. This encouraged trade and commerce in the kingdom. Bimbisara was a tolerant and generous ruler. He was a Buddhist, but the people of other religions in his kingdom enjoyed full freedom to follow their own faith. He had several meetings with Lord Buddha. He respected Lord Buddha very much. Lord Buddha also showered his blessings on him. Ajad Shatru Son of Bimbisara, he was a very ambitious ruler. He ruled over Magdha from 493 BC to 462 BC. He invaded the territories of Kosala, kingdom of Vaji, and annexed the kingdom of Kashi. Magadha became the most powerful kingdom of northern India under him. After death of Ajad Shatru, two important dynasties, the Shishunagas and Nandas, ruled Magadha. Finally, the Nandas were succeeded by Maurya dynasty. The status of the king. The Brahmins accepted the king to be most powerful in administration. They said that the king was not like an ordinary man and asked the people to regard him as a godlike power on earth. They also performed certain ceremonies to glorify the king's position. The king led a life of grandeur in a splendid palace. There were many servants to attend to him, while his Purohits and Amatyas were also his ministers Several other officers helped him in his work. He received a share of produce from the cultivators. A part of the state income was spent on building roads, wells and canals. In the republics, the leader's position was very different. He was elected from amongst the people. Brahmins had nothing to do with such elections, so they had no influence on the head of the republic. Taxation system the king ruled with the help of a number of paid officers, but to make their payments, he needed taxes. Thus, all the producers of goods 
paid a tax to the king. In the beginning, they paid taxes in the form of goods they produced. Peasants paid one-sixth bhaga of their produce. The king had a group of officers known as tax collectors. These tax collectors visited every village, measured the land of each peasant and noted the amount of grain produced. The tax collectors kept records and collected the tax in the form of money or goods, that is, in cash or kind. Even hunters had to provide forest produce to the king. Most of the people still lived in the villages, but with the growth of population, the number of villages increased. Villages were connected with one another by roads and waterways. Each village had a headman. He worked for the king and for the people in his village. He was a link between the king and the villagers. Some villages and lands belonged to the king. He employed laborers to cultivate the lands. These laborers were paid wages for their work. Towns and cities This period saw the rise of many towns and cities. The literary sources point out the existence of such cities as Ujjaini in Malwa, Tamralipti in the Ganga Delta, Ayodhya, Koshambi in Uttar Pradesh, Champa, Vaishali and Rajgriha in Bihar. The excavations of these towns reveal that common people's houses were made of bricks and wood. They were better than those built in villages. The king's palace was built of wood and stone and was elegantly decorated. Society With the increase in trade, artisans and merchants began to form organized groups. These groups were known as Shirnis or Guild. Setis, who were financier and also sometimes head of the trade guilds, emerged as an important social group. Since artisans lived and worked together, they grew very closely to one another and married among themselves. Soon, they began to be regarded as a caste or jati. Monetary System In the beginning, there was no such thing as money. There were no coins. People exchanged goods for goods to meet their needs. Exchange of goods for goods was called barter. A new method of exchange was invented later. It was a coin with a fixed value. Thus, a new system of exchange and value came into vogue. It was the introduction of monetary system. Coins were easy to carry. The introduction of coins facilitated and enhanced the scope of trade. Since money is freely exchangeable against any type of goods or services, trade expanded greatly after coins came into use. Goods produced in the Ganga Valley were sent to Taxila or even across the Vindhya Mountains to South India or to Western Asia. Religion Brahmanism was the prevalent religion. The Brahmins performed all the rituals and ceremonies in Sanskrit, a language not understood by the common people. The common people could not afford the expensive rituals. This paved the way for the rise of Buddhism and Jainism. Agriculture was the main source of income for the people. In agriculture, two new methods were introduced which led to the increase in production. Firstly, iron plowshares began to be used widely and secondly, people began transplantation of paddy. Rice, wheat, barley, jowar and cotton were the main crops. Farmers paid taxes to the kings both in cash as well as kind. 